Hello, hello, gorgeous humans. It is a thrill to have you all here. I am going to be um, doing a live for the next hour or so, and I'm going to be sharing a keynote, keynote presentation that I'm giving at the Heart Centered Business Conference, which is happening this weekend. Um, and I have created the most beautiful slideshow. I'm so into it. it <laughs> A lot of hand drawing and illustrating to make this. Um, I'm going to be talking about my business journey, how I started um, and how I've grown it to creating over $13 million in 10 hours a week um, and all the big lessons I've learned along the way. Um, so we're going to be streaming this to a few different areas. If you comment where you are, um, I'll be able to see it all. Um, this is going to be on Facebook. Um, on my page, Facebook, in my student group, and YouTube as well. So if you're here watching live, I can see there's some people already starting to jump on. If you could just pop in the comments that you can hear me okay and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then we shall proceed and we will have so much fun. This should go for about um, 40, 45 minutes for the presentation. And then um, I will stick around for to ask any question, to answer any questions that you have. So feel free to pick my brain. Yes, I am recording this from bed. Of course, I'm recording it from bed. Where else would I be? All right. Hi, Annette from Scotland. I'm thrilled you're here. Okay. Let's get started. Oh, hi, Tracy, my neighbor from down the road. I love that we've got people, someone from Scotland and someone from just down the road for me. <laughs> okay, beautiful humans. Let's begin. Now it is, I'm going to put my little timer on so that I um, can see exactly how long I have left to do my presentation in. Just so that I, so I can keep beautifully on time. Nice. All right. Hello, hello, beautiful humans, and welcome to how to create raving fans that buy from you for decades. Now, if you don't know me already, you might be thinking, what is this? Who is this? Um, I love the quote, like, <laughs> you may not have heard of me, but now that you do, you won't ever fucking forget me. And I hope to be that level of outrageous, that level of delicious, that level of like, huh, they're doing it a little bit differently. And I want to give you permission to do the same. So I am an artist. I am a writer. I'm a teacher. I have autism and ADHD. I am a mum to two. I am a committed pervert to my husband. He's so very lucky that I have been so committed <laughs> to that act. Um, I live and create on Gubby Gubby country and I want to pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. Uh, I'm very grateful to live here on the Sunshine Coast in Australia. I am the creator of the Goals Workbooks, which have been used by over half a million people worldwide, which is just wild and ridiculous. And I feel very blessed. I created those back in 2010 for myself because I wanted to create, I wanted to write goals that um, covered every area of my life that made goal setting fun. And it was about creativity and spirituality and health and relationships and travel, not just about the money and career side, even though I incorporate that as well. So the goals workbooks were born out of that deep desire. I made it for myself thought I'd share about it online. Uh, I thought it'd be really cool if like 10 people ended up doing their goals with me. Um, and within the first couple of weeks, over a thousand people have bought. And every year since then, it's just grown and grown and grown because once people use them once, they're like, oh, holy shit, this really works. And um, they tend to do it again year after year and invite other people along on that journey with them, which is just magnificent. I'm also award-winning. I won Entrepreneurs People's Choice Business Coach Award, Businesses Making a Difference Award, Global Brand Award. I was finalist for my for my business's Businesswoman of the Year Award in Australia. And I'm currently the finalist for the Small Business Champion Award as well, which is very exciting. Um, and 
because Tash is running the Heart Centered Business Conference this weekend, I do like to remind everyone that I am one of the her most favorite people that's ever been born. Um, and like, just look how much she just adores me, like the eyes of love. Like I am definitely not saying something ridiculous and TMI at this point, am I? <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Uh, I've also created over $13 million in 10 hours a week. And I'm going to go through how. Because when I say that to people, they're always like, how the fuck have you done that? Um, being the little rainbow neurodivergent spirit that you are. Now, when I was growing up, I grew up on a cattle property. My parents were farmers. And they gave me three rules when I was growing up. They told me you cannot have a creative career because um, all artists are starving. They said you cannot have a small business because all small businesses fail in the first five years and you shouldn't earn in the highest tax bracket because then you pay too much tax. And I listened to their advice. I was like, well, they know best. This is um, what I like. I guess I'll just have to follow what they say to do. So I decided if I couldn't have a creative career, if I couldn't be what I wanted and what I truly wanted was to be an artist and a writer and somebody who changed the world. Um, so I thought if I can't have that, I will take second best. And second best for me was to become Prime Minister of Australia. And I am not joking when I say that. So um, at a very young age, when I was 20, I moved to Canberra, which is like the Washington of Australia. And I started doing a public policy degree at Australian National University. I started working in government departments. Um, I went up the ranks really quickly. I got to work in Parliament House. I got to work for ministers. And it was the most amazing experience. But I very, very quickly learned that um, it wasn't for me. That I, they, politicians, whether I agree with their policies or not, I want to honour and respect the fact that they work incredibly hard and very long hours and they have to have a kind of thick skin that I do not possess. I don't have thick skin. I don't even have thin skin. My nerves are just like zing. They're out there protruding into the world. Um, so I knew that I would lose kind of an essential part of myself in the process if I... Um, if I kept going down that path. Joni says, can't wait to see your conference this week. Joni, I can't wait to meet you. Also, just wanted to let you know, I am doing this talk at conference this weekend. So if you want it to be fresh and new for you, um, run! Otherwise, you can listen to it twice. <laughs> I'm sure I'll come up with even more fun stories on stage as well. So, um, so I knew like very quickly, like this isn't the right path for me to become prime minister. And still inside me, there was this deep longing, this deep burning that still said, I want to create, I want to write, I want to change the world through that process. So I, um, I was still in my early 20s when I decided that and I knew I needed to come out to my parents about it and it did feel like a coming out process and I remember flying from Canberra back to my hometown in regional Queensland and my farmer dad picked me up from the airport and he mostly just spoke at grunts in grunts at that point in his life um, so he picked me up from the airport and I just couldn't even hold it in any longer I said dad I have something really important I need to tell you and he said, uh, what's that? And I said, I need to let you know that I am going to be an artist. I'm going to have a creative career. And he said, uh, well, there's no money in that. And I said, I know. And you're a farmer and your father's father was also a farmer and his father was also a farmer. And there's also no money in farming either. So I guess I just like come from like a really long line of dreamers. <laughs> And he said, oh, you think you're funny, don't you? And I said, I absolutely do. I do think I am golden. <laughs> um, and 
um, that was it. Like I'd made the decision, come out to my parents, I'm going to be an artist and um, decided to be very determined and head off in that direction. And really quickly, like I was like, oh, I had made that decision. I was like, right, okay, let's set the goal for the next year. You know, like I was still working for the Australian government. I still held that job while I was working out how to have a creative career, how to have a creative business. And I remember going for a walk and I set a goal, okay, I want to earn $30,000 a year in the next year from um, – my creativity from my art, from my business, this tiny little burgeoning business that I'd been doing on the side. And I was so inspired, you know, I was like, yeah, $30,000, I'm going to do it. And I ran home and I started writing down all the numbers of all the things that I could do to make $30,000 in a year. And I realized, like I worked out how many art prints I'd needed to sell for my Etsy store, how many art markets I'd need to attend. And when I looked at those numbers, I thought, there's no way, I don't know how on earth I would be able to sell this amount. It's, this seems completely impossible. And I was at this, like this real fork in the road, you know, where I could have just gone, you know what, it's impossible. I am not going to be able to have a creative career. Like I can't make enough money as an artist. Or I could do it, go down this other path and I'm forever grateful for my mind because my mind didn't say it's impossible. Instead it said, okay, just because I don't know how to do that yet, I don't know how to make the kind of money I need to from my business for it to be sustainable. That just must mean that I don't know something that other people know, that there's other people out there who've been successful so they just have some keys that I don't have yet and I can learn what those keys are. And I'm forever grateful for that turn in the road I did, um, that, that absolute moment of clarity where I thought I absolutely commit to learning whatever it is I need to learn in order to have a sustainable creative business. And I did it. I committed myself to learning about business. I committed myself to going to the business gym every day by reading everything I could about business and marketing and learning and implementing it and testing it in my business and staying laser focused on creating a abundant business. And that first year I managed to do it. By becoming a student of business and marketing, I built a $30,000 a year business. The next year after that, $60,000. The year after that, $150,000. And it kept on doubling or tripling each year um, until I hit seven figures. And I've maintained an average of seven figures, aka over you know about a million dollars in revenue um, or more since 2014. What's more... My, my accountant said to me, the only like when we look at the customer lifespan um, of, of customers, of like when they find out about a business, when they um, decide to buy from that business and when they eventually leave that business, usually it's we count that in accounting terms in months. But for you, it's not even years. We wouldn't even count it in years. We would count it in decades because you have an exceptionally sticky business. When somebody buys from you um, or, you know, becomes a part of your circle, uh, becomes a part of like getting your emails, they stay. They stay not just for a little while, but for an extraordinarily long amount of time. And so today I want to share with you those aspects that I am um, think have helped me to grow this very sustainable, very profitable business. Um, and at its core, it's because I've been able to build just absolute raving fans that buy from me for these enormously long periods of time. So I look at it like a flower. There's five petals to this flower. Creating and sharing, custom fitting your business to you, testing and playing, authentic sharing and connection, and over delivering with generosity. I'm going to talk about how I've implemented all those parts into my business. So when I look at my academy, which is my membership site, and I've run that on and off since 2010, 
we know that on average about 80% of my academy members renew. So every single year they pay for another year of membership. Now I'm in an industry where that average is about 5% renew. So 80% is definitely a huge outlier. I have academy members who have been in there since 2010. I opened doors September 2010. I had people stay in there from September 2010 all the way up until I did um, a close 2019, I think it was. Um, I reopened again last year. Immediately, those same people back in again. Like I've heard from people so many times that um, they feel like a three-legged stool when they don't have my membership. They feel like, uh, sorry, a two-legged stool. They just feel a little bit off balance. And that's what I'm aiming to do is just make things so great and so glorious and so helpful that, of course, people want it in their lives. I remember last year um, I sold a $5,000 coaching package in 2022 to somebody who has followed me since 2002. 20 years. I didn't even have a blog when she first found me. We were just on the same message board together. Um, and she became a fan because of the way that I shared in that message board and the, the artwork and the stories that I shared in there. Um, and then followed me onto the blog and then all of my business journey since then. And I hadn't really like super spoken to her in like 20 years. But as soon as I offered that, she was like, fuck yes, I am in. And that's the power of building like these long-term beautiful relationships. The thing is like you, you can't work out what's going to make your business succeed just by thinking about it. You can only try and do and see what works for you and see what works for your people because what works for somebody else isn't going to necessarily work for you and for your strengths and for your people and how they learn and what excites them. So don't over like analyze, don't over plan and instead just get in the practice of like, okay, I want to, I want to learn this thing about business. Let me try it out and see if it works for me and see if it feels like a good fit. You know, for me in working out this business and working out like the business model that works for me, like I have tried so many freaking things. I've sold art at markets. I studied 11 different subjects at university from anthropology to philosophy to journalism. Um, I did wedding photography. I worked in the public service for many years while I was building on the side. I did life coaching online. I taught, I did tarot card readings online. I uh, taught creativity workshops in person and then eventually online. I took belly dancing to see if that was the thing that was going to be like the thing that lit me up, the thing I was meant to do for the rest of my life. It wasn't, but, you know, I tried it anyway. Um, I ran spiritual retreats. I deserve, I designed my own merch tried sacred dance. I sold art on Etsy. I tried all the different things in order to work out what was going to work beautifully um, for me. I want you to know, like, while you're trying to work out what it is that you're meant to do with your life, what it is that you want to do in your business, like, I want you to know, it doesn't actually have to be stressful. You don't have to like have a deadline. Like I need to know my soul's purpose. I need to have a like um, the perfect business model by the end of this year. You don't have to feel like mistakes are bad. You can still go on these wonderful adventures and taking wrong turns. It's part of that process. You get like, I tried so many freaking things and I'm grateful for all of them because all of them, have contributed um, in the end. Like I'm so grateful that I did the public service for so long because I did learn some excellent skills and I made some beautiful relationships and friendships in that process as well. You are not behind. You don't have to feel like, well, I'm 35, I'm 65 and I still haven't worked out what I want to do. That is okay. You are perfectly on time. And while you're working out 
what it is that you want to do and what you want to do with your business. Like it really can be about fun and play and exploration. It can be writing a list of all the things that you've ever wanted to do in your life and start trying them out. It can be like an act of freedom and you can do it while financially supported. Like it is okay to have a job while you build your business on the side or while you play and work things out while you're experiencing burnout. I have one client who um, had a business for many years, has just sold it and is trying to work out the next thing to do and is so brutally burnt out. And I said, babes, like you don't have to be in a rush to work this out. You can Get a job. It's not a failure to have a job. Like I regard jobs as like early investors in your business. And I'm forever grateful for my experiences um, in the public service while I built my business. So when I did eventually leave, it wasn't this enormous pressure on my business to succeed. It needed to succeed, absolutely. But um, I could support myself while I went through that play and exploration process. Another core tenant for me in my business is creating and sharing. My business is really just passing my journal around the dorm. So what I mean by that is when I was 16, um, I lived in a small country town and I went to my parents and I said, I don't want to be here anymore. (laughs) Um, I don't want to be at this same school. Um, There wasn't any other schools in my area at that time. And um, I said to them, I'm either going overseas for as an exchange student for a year or I am going to boarding school. And I'm very grateful to my parents who uh, um, were very supportive of that process. And they said, OK, we would prefer if you went to boarding school at this point and you can go be an exchange student later. And I did. Um, and um, I got to go to this beautiful little boarding school, which I'm very, very blessed. Um, managed to get a scholarship there so my parents could somewhat afford it, even though it was an an enormous stress for them. Um, But I lived in a dorm with 20 other kids, mostly from properties like regional farms um, from around Queensland and um, lots of kids from um, Indigenous communities and Papua New Guinea communities as well, which was really amazing. And... Um, my art, I had the most fantastic art teacher and he gave us art journals and taught us how to use it as like a, a room of one's own to create and collage and think of ideas and write. And um, it was a beautiful process. And so I would like just threw myself into it and I'd make my art journal. And then I was just so delighted with the act that I would um people would ask me if they could look at it and read it. And I was like, of course, yes. And so I would send it around the dorm and people would just like the next person who wanted to read it would then pass it on to the next one. And then um, when I want to go work on my art journal, I'd have to go around the dorm and work out who had my art journal. And I loved it because one, I love sharing. um, And two, I love that it inspired them to do their art journals. And therefore I got to watch, look at their art journals. It was a very exciting process. And when I think about my my blog, my business, my creations, it really just feels like that art journal being sent around a dorm. Like, oh, I get to make stuff and I get to share it. Um, and like, I also don't have to hunt down my art journal anymore. It just goes out into the world. What a miracle. What a blessing. What an enormous blessing that we get to create and share instantly in this most magical way. So I regard like my business, everything I can create when it comes to webinars and free content and um, like my social media content, it's all just that creative act. And I think of it in terms of like two areas, there's the free content and then there's the paid content. You know, I've got my e- my free eBooks, podcasts, blogs, social media, interviews, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then my paid content as well. So I wrote books, I've created courses, I have bundles, I do events. Um, they're all just a beautiful act of creating and sharing. And I really regard like creating as this thing that, you know, it doesn't just drive my business, but it 
is an enormous sacred and healing act for me. I always say creations heal the hands that they move through first. So when you're the one that, when you get to create something in whatever form that you feel called to, you are healed in that process. And um, I've just shared over the weekend about um, I've been having, I've been experiencing low levels of self-esteem about my business at the moment for whatever reason, like for a reason I, I don't quite know. Um, but the first act in healing for me was to write about it and share about it. And I just got the most incredible responses back from people who see me and they witness me and they say, oh, my gosh, me too. Or, or I never realized you felt that way. Um, and it's just such a, a sacred thing. Even if I wasn't making money out of this, I would still be doing it because it's so important to my soul. I want you to know as well, like you absolutely get to build a business custom fit for you. You do not need to, um, you don't need to do business in a way that looks like anybody else. You don't need to do business as usual. You can do it in a way that really just works for you and who you are. So when you build a business that's custom fit for you, you are going to give people a better customer experience because you're not overexerting yourself. You're not trying to be all the things to all the people. Um, and people know how they can, you know, um, use you, but in a way that works for both of you, that's got really beautiful boundaries in place. It is absolutely going to give you better health because you're not going to be burnt out. You're not going to have terrible work-life balance. You're not going to have sleep disruptions, all that kind of stuff. When you build a business that's custom fit for you, you can also see more strategically because you're not just like in the forest, you know, you can't see the forest for the trees. Um, you're not so busy working in your business that you can't work on your business. And it is going to result in better profit and a bigger impact when um, you custom fit for you. So for me, what that looks like is that I have a rule now that I only hire people who are neurodivergent, um, people who have autism or ADHD or other kinds of neurodivergency. And the reason is because as a neurodivergent person myself, I don't clearly understand neurotypical people. I don't understand the subtleties. I don't understand how they work and how they communicate. And it causes me a lot of pain and a lot of stress. And um, they drive me crazy and I drive them batshit crazy as well. And when I work with people who are neurodivergent, I do not. I feel like they have such better communication skills with me. I appreciate their bluntness. I appreciate when they're just saying to me, hey, I'm not able to do this for this reason and this is why. And we can take care of each other impeccably in those conversations without it turning into just this, I don't know, clusterfuck of feeling. <laughs> so for me, just like working with neurodivergent folk is chef's kiss, chef's kiss. I only work 10 hours a week and that's kind of like the average some hours, some weeks I work none, some I work a bit more. Um, I take about three or four months of holidays a year. Um, for me, I only worked 10 hours a week because in the very beginning um, I didn't have any more hours than that. I was working full-time for the public service while I built my business on the side and I only left when I had a small child and <laughs> babies take a lot of time guys uh, and so I learned how to wean down my tasks to just do the important things um, and it is so much better for my sanity it's so much better for my family it's better for my neurodiversity and it's better because I don't have a good back <laughs> um, my rule is also like I will not really leave the house like I'm leaving for a conference this weekend it's the first one that I've done in uh first conference I've been to in six years or more um I don't really travel I don't really do live events um I don't mastermind travel all over the place I don't go to many conferences um because 
that's all going to take away an enormous part of like it's going to take me a lot to rebalance if I went away for um, a week on a conference or a travel or whatever it's going to take me at least a month to recover so I don't and that way I can stay nice and um, grounded and settled and um, not stimulated um, I can still grow an enormous business but I don't have to do what everyone else is doing I also limit all my zoom calls I make sure that like I tell contractors let's not talk over email <laughs> Uh, let's, sorry, let's not talk over Zoom. I just want the information over email or you can text or in very extreme cases, you can voice message me if you must. Um, I choose people like I chose my videographer purely because he didn't want to have a call with me to go over the quote when I've already given him all the information. Um, everyone else who was like, let's do a Zoom call. I was like, no, no, I'll just go with that one person who works with my communication style. Um, I have tens of thousands of students and I do group coaching. And so I open, I open like an office, open office hour about once a month, um, like at least once a month. And people can ask their questions that way through me. I do one to two hour hours of interviews per week. That's it. It's limited. It's just on one day. I do golden week. So every fourth week um, I have zero appointments and I do not have any team meetings over video. Um, we text, basically, uh, because mama don't like. Um, and I've learned this about myself as well. I much prefer having a tiny team over a big team. It works so much better for me. I At, at a certain point in my business, it was growing so much that um, I had like 25 staff. And I hated it. I absolutely hated it. It made me feel like I was going batshit and I wanted to run away from my business. And I never run or want to run away from my business because I love it so much. But I love it when I have a tiny team who self-manages, who are neurodivergent, who just get on and get shit done without me having to run like a corporation. Um, if uh, you're at a conference, I'm giving you worksheets. If you would like the worksheets for free, if you go to, here we go, I'll put up this little banner theonydawson.com forward slash heart, I'm going to be giving away all my conference worksheets. I'm also getting the conference professionally recorded, um, the, the, my keynote speech, and I will give that to you for free. Um, I'm also going to be doing illustrated notes from the conference as well. So if you want a full PDF of those, if you want all the things I'm creating around raving fans, go to theonydawson.com forward slash heart and you will get them all for free, which is really fun. I was going to sell this, um, and for right at this moment, I think I'll just give it away because why the fuck not? <laughs> um, all right. So another, core, uh, another cornerstone for me is over-delivering with generosity. So for me, I want to help thousands of people, not one-to-one. -one. So I don't really do any one-to-one -one work. Instead, I would rather create a program or a book that would help thousands of people instead of one-to-one. -one. I have a whole page called my free shit page where I just give away so much stuff. I give away like 300-page coloring books. I give away meditations. I give away eBooks and marketing workshops, all the fucking things. I just give it away and I have um, a mailing list and people are always telling me like it is the best mailing list I'm on because I just give people free shit every single week, new stuff all the time and I aim to deliver and over deliver. With all of my courses and my memberships and my books, it's definitely like I like to be lower priced. I like to be super affordable. Um, and that way I can help more students instead of less. I don't want people to have to go into credit card debt to work with me. They can just like buy really affordably. I also have my academy, which is my membership. It's where you can get all of my courses and workshops. Um, and like th I think we're up to like $6,000 in value. And um, you get it for under $100 a year. It's not open at the moment. Uh, I think we may do a, a short intake possibly next month. If you go onto the wait list, theonydawson.com forward slash academy, it is less than a hundred bucks. And um, I pour so much goodness in there. 
Um, and most of all, I'm really strategic with my boundaries. I know that I can over deliver with generosity because I've got boundaries that keep me in place. I don't respond to emails directly. I don't um, private message with people. I don't uh, do free one-to-one -one coaching really because that would take so much more time away from things that would help more than just one person. Um, again, you can get these beautiful worksheets at leonidawson.com forward slash heart. Um, really just to help you work out how to build like this over generosity in your business that really just delivers for people. Um, another thing that I get told all the time is that Leonie, like you are more authentic than most people out there. People also say to me when they meet me like, oh, you're exactly who you are online. And I'm like, who else would I fucking be guys? Like, <laughs> would you imagine if this is a fucking character I created? Um, for me, I want to talk about all the things. I don't want to just talk about the polished stuff. I want to talk about the real stuff. So I, I talked publicly about my, my autism and ADHD diagnosis. I've spoken frequently about my experiences with burnout. I've talked about the huge business mistakes I've made along the way as well. I, ha I went through postnatal depression and anxiety. I shared about that. I went through hyperemesis gravidarum, which is a chronic pregnancy illness um, I've shared about depressive episodes that I've experienced and um, one thing I've learned along the way it has been one enormously healing for me to do that and um, it's been healing for other people when they get to hear those stories and they feel less alone in it I always say to people, like, make sure you're sharing from the healed scar, not the open wound. Like, I didn't share while I was in the middle of a depressive episode um, because I wasn't okay at that point. But um, once I'd gotten the support I needed and, the, and um, you know, medication, therapy, all that kind of stuff, and gathered the support from my people, once it had healed over, that's when I could talk about it. And so that's that tends to be the rule. For me, I think it is a sacred act to, for me to fly my freak flag, for me to share all the things that make me Leone. I don't have to look like anybody else. I don't have to be like anyone else. I don't have to look polished um, in order for me to be a professional business owner. Um, and when you fly your freak flag, you're giving people something to hold on to, something to go, oh, that's one of my people. That is somebody I completely get and completely understand. And not everyone's going to get it. And that's totally fine. If you attempt to be the most beige version of yourself, you aren't going to resonate with anyone. But when you give people something to understand and hold on to um, it can be enormously powerful I always like to think as well like for me just by being my truest wildest self I get to extend the bell curve of normality I make it easier for people to be more of themselves and to feel like they're okay in that so there's like, I think of like the bell curve of normality, right? Like how we all have to fit in this um, little subsection of the population in order to be regarded as normal. And for me, I like to push, like, that's the extreme. I want to be all of myself and um, including my oddnesses. And then it allows people to feel safer to be who they are as well. I want you to know, first and foremost, like your, the world needs you. It needs your story. It needs your wisdom in just the way that you can share about it. The cornerstones of creating a business that has raving fans for decades is really about authenticity and connection, over-delivering and being all of yourself in that. Um, it creates enormously powerful feelings on the inside and it can create absolutely huge results in business as well. And if you haven't already, make sure you go to leonidawson.com forward slash heart so that I can send you this as a the presentation um, and all of the worksheets and all that great stuff as well. Right, I did it. 
I did it in my 40 minute mark. Nailing it. Nailing it. All right, I'm going to have a look over at comments now. And um, I am very happy to answer people's questions as well. So if you've got a question, please pop it in the comments and then I can share about them here as well. Um, oh, no, that's the wrong thing. There we go. <laughs> Um, if somebody, if you want to go to the conference, I think there's actually one ticket left that Tash's um, tickets are sold, but I think there's one person who can't make it because they need to do emergency surgery. So if you um, are desperate to come to a conference this weekend, there's one place left. It's going to be so much fun. There, are, I get to catch up with all of my online business besties, like um, Denise Duffield-Thomas, Victoria Gibson, um, Kerry Rowett's going to be there, Amanda Rusi, Bridget Oselmine, all my mastermind is going to be there. One of my besties, Maddie's going to be there. I'm so excited. Still excited. Um, Natalie says your Canberra retreat was my still, still my favorite event. It's been a bloody long time. It really has, right? 2016. That is how many years ago? Wild. Um, Fiona says, oh, I didn't know that you had also sent, got your sent away to boarding school as well. I know. Um, yeah, it's, it's not common to send yourself to boarding school, but I'm really glad I did it. And I also feel very grateful. My best friend, Daniel, um, we were at the state school together and I told him I was going to boarding school and he was just like, you're not fucking leaving me here by myself. And so he managed to convince his parents to send him to the same boarding school as me. And I feel just so lucky that I got to do it that way. Um, I still got to have my best friend going to a totally unknown environment. And it ended up just being the best thing for both of us. And I'm still friends to this day um, with so many of those girls from that dorm. Um, Karen says, this takes so much pressure off. I need to remember to play as I build my business. Yeah, absolutely. Play is a really important part of building a business, experimenting and trying and seeing what works and seeing what doesn't. Um, Robin says, wow, the conference you're going to must be super amazing. It is. Um, it's the Heart Centered Business Conference run by Tash Corbin. I, um, I am very particular about conferences that I do go to because I don't like to leave the house. Also, the last business conference I went to was run by Success Resources and it had Gary Vaynerchuk there and it was the worst thing I've ever been to, ever. I just spent the whole time just rage posting against it <laughs> because it was just like a total pitch fest. I would, like, it was just an absolute sea of dicks trying to convince people to sign up for $25,000 programs to get rich. And it was just bullshit. It was bullshit. Um, Tori says the ad Academy is awesome. Jessica says the Academy is so good. Oh, I'm so grateful. It makes me so happy. Um, just realize this is a preview for the conference. Well, who's here there? Oh, mate, it's going to be so great. Um, Fair Maiden Market says, I'd like to make an ebook. If I make a page using Canva, is that quality good enough for an ebook I, if I turn it to a PDF? Yeah, absolutely. As long as like the size is big enough, like you do A4 document size or letter size or whatever. Um, yeah, that absolutely can um, become an ebook. Canva's re like resources are getting even better. And um, one thing that I am especially excited about is that you create slideshows in there now and you can um, record webinars in there and you can even like present it as a live webinar as well with a video of you, with audio of you. It has like a little recording studio in Canva now. It is incredible. Like what an absolute joy. I guess the more I listen to you, identify to those neurodivergents with tea, coffee, and lemon water on my table at the same time. For those of you who don't know why this is important, 
I talk about the fact that um, neurodivergent people always have um, three drinks around them <laughs> at all times, even now. I've got water, tea, kombucha. <laughs> Uh, my question is about this capacity. You have to go to the essential. My brain keeps linking one pound to another and another, another, and then it's chaos. And I feel, see, want so much that I freeze. Absolutely. That's like the beauty of our brain and also like the part that we need to learn how to manage. Um, there's a book that I recommend for all people um, with ADHD or neurodivergence, and that is um, Faster Than Normal by Peter Shankman. He's got some really good uh, one, I love his perspective on it um, because he really focuses a lot on the positives of it um, and they're really sound strategies in there as well. For me, I whenever I get stuck like that, I go, okay, what is this? Like this one small thing I can do right now to start building some momentum, to start um, break out of this cycle of inertia like what's the tiniest little thing I can get done in five minutes to um, just have one thing to tick off the list? Because as soon as you start getting that, you get a little bit more momentum. When you get stuck on a task, just break it down into even smaller and smaller micro tasks and then you start building a little bit more um, momentum going to it. Robin says, I'd love to see your art journal. I love all the colours. That reminds me, I need to record. I just finished another art journal. Um, I'm going to do a screen flow of it and share it in the academy for people who just want to peek in my art journal as well. Rachel says, I admire your anti-niche approach. What are your thoughts on niching down when starting a new business or side hustle? You absolutely can. Absolutely. If it works for you and you try and you go, yeah, that's great, do it. If it makes you freeze and freak out, don't. Every time I go to try and niche, my niche is anyone who likes this personality, ding. The non-niche is people who get turned off by this personality. <laughs> that's my red velvet rope. Tanya says, um, I'm buying that last ticket. Can you hook me up, Gorge? I fucking need this today. Thank you. Absolutely. Now, what's the best way for me? If you write tash at tashcorbin.com or if you give me your email address and I can text Tash and see if it's still free i i can't i don't know how much the price of the ticket is they are it is a ex, more expensive thing it's around a thousand dollars or so um but well worth it i'll just text her might have someone who wants it what's the best way for them to contact you Um, Peacock and Fig said, I just took part in a huge local design conference, um, did an art install for the opening night. It was so nice being at a conference and people weren't trying to sell you on everything. This is the thing, right, is that, like, some events can be just so shitholery. And I really appreciate that Tash has created, like, a sacred event space it is intersectional it is women-centric it is um supportive of um you know it's it's intersectionally focused and um there is no selling from the stage it is not a pitch fest it is content only um and so i actually bought my ticket to it years ago because i was looking for a conference to go to covid happened i haven't gone yet um now i'm speaking at it but I would be going there even if I wasn't. And I, don't, I think Denise Duffield Thomas might be. I don't even. I think Denise just bought a ticket just to come and learn. Um, but I think she might do something on stage as well. Because who fucking why not? Um, where can I find or buy buy now buttons? I've got GoDaddy. It's only got a couple. You always talk about adding all these buttons. Where are they? Lols. Um, one, I like I just I design all mine and you can create them in Kajabi. 
Um, I mean, you can use ones that are already there, but I just find they're way too small. Like on, on sales pages, you need really large ones. So, um, yeah, Canva probably. Yanina says, uh, I love the Academy. I'm so grateful to have found you, Leona. You've been such an inspiration. If I may ask, how do you create consistency to stay focused and be pulled in many different directions? For me, um, I can do all of the things, just not at the same time. So I just need to pick one project to finish and put out in the world, share, promote it. Uh, and then once that's complete, then I can move on to the next thing. You know, like I've got lots and lots of courses out there, but I didn't create them all at the same time. It was just one after the other. Do you use a special camera to record? What do you use? It's so clear, the picture and sound. I don't. It's just my laptop. I'm a lazy bitch. <laughs> um, some of my social media posts are taken on my oh, iPhone, my video. Um, but other than that, I'm just a basic bitch. Messina says, every time I see you or do a course, I feels like you're talking to me personally. You remind me always that I can succeed using my neuro spicy skills over what my parents expected of me. Yes. Yes, you can. And just remember, like, being neuro spicy is the entrepreneurial mindset. It is the success mindset. Um, it's not a hindrance to it. It is the creation of it. Um, <laughs> because like they did a study on like 70%, they did a study on like all the top CEOs and at least 70% of them, um, <laughs> ticked a checklist that showed that they have ADHD symptoms. <laughs> okay. Um, Jess Jessica says, what's the difference between, between a niche and a target market? Honestly, I don't really know and I don't really care. It's just there's many things that you can opt out of in business and me knowing words like that is something I've opted out of. I've still made a lot of money, but I don't need to know those words. If I was being less sarcastic, I would say like educated guess. Niche is like where you're very specific about exactly what you offer to your specific target market, they're kind of dipsy doed. Uh, Christine says, I was watching you from YouTube. I couldn't figure out how to comment. So here I am because I want you to beg you to open a, a flash open for the Academy. I so need a little motivational push. Oh, you sweet human. Go to leonidawson.com forward slash Academy. Get on the mailing list. I will do one. Yes, I will. Pull, like I'll, I'll probably just open it for maybe five days or a week or something. Robin says, put yourself on the wait list for the Academy. It's super worth it. It's wonderfully amazing. That makes me so happy. I'm so grateful. All right. So I've still got um, 15 minutes before I pick up the kids. So I'm very happy to hang out and answer more questions if you like. Or if you just want me to sing you a little song, I also have to sing you a little song. Once upon a time there was a song. There was a song. There was a song. <laughs> and it went like this. Uh, oh, and I should mention as well for people who um, would like to know, um, I, for me to like stream this across so many places and put these little bubbles up and stuff, I use something called streamyard.com. I really like it. Um, I mean, you, you, it is paid, but I find it very useful. I found it very good. Um, you know, Dawson.com forward slash heart if you want to get all the worksheets and if you want to get the recording from the presentation or my illustrated conference notes, make sure you go check the note that way. That one out. You know, Dawson.com forward slash heart. Um, I was going to sell for like, 25 bucks or something but whatever I just prefer to give it away and if you know of anyone that wants a inspiration boost um, make sure you send them that way as well and the heart center business conference.com I think she just opened up tickets for 2024 as well and she tends to sell out a lot in advance 
Um, so that's how we do that. All right. Humans. How old are your girls now? Mine's 15 in June. Holy smokes. That is beautiful. And um, I'm so proud of you. That's amazing. Look what you did. You're making like an almost adult. How bizarre. Um, my girls are 9 and 13 now. And they are just, they're such cool, cool people. They're such cool people. Uh, is that already in our business classes? Yeah. If you've got the academy, I'll grant you all access to um, the raving fans uh, presentation and all the good bits as well. Hi, my beautiful friend Deanne. Canberra Deanne. I'd, it's Canberra Deanne, isn't it? Let me just, yeah, that looks like Canberra Deanne. <laughs> um, she said, thank you for so, doing so much for doing this live. Oh, gosh, thank you for listening to me, guys. I'm glad I got this presentation um, sorted. Very fun, very fun. Tosca says, how do I join your academy? If you go to uh, leonidawson.com forward slash academy uh, and jump on the wait list next month, I'll probably open it up maybe for a week or so for people to be able to jump in if they want and um, – it's hugely, hugely useful. Yeah, all my courses, all my workshops, you get monthly new um, guest expert workshops and business basics workshops and sales and marketing and all the shit. Um, it's fucking bonza. And I don't just say that. It's only it's 100 bucks a year. Under 100 bucks a year. It's the greatest thing I've ever invented. <laughs> all right, my queens, I'm going to head off. Um, it's a joy to connect with you all. I have the biggest rainfall coming down right now and it makes me so happy i love the rain rain is my rain is my boo i feel so much better when it's raining oh bless all right um have a beautiful day and make sure you go you know yourself.com forward slash heart in order to grab all the goodies from this lots of love everyone